in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. Ladies and gentlemen, today's shadow adventure starts in just a moment. And as usual, it is packed with hair-raising thrills. But none can compare with the thrill and relief that comes from being saved by a Silvertown stop in wet weather driving emergencies. What you need between your car and rain-drenched pavements are the new Goodrich Safety Silvertown tires with the Lifesaver tread. This truly amazing tread actually dries wet roads, protects you against that hazard zone of motoring where a slippery film of water on the road may make complete control of your car almost impossible. That's because the never-ending spiral bars of the Lifesaver tread act like a battery of windshield wipers. They sweep the water right and left, force it out through deep drainage grooves, make a dry track for the rubber to grip. For safety's sake, make your next tires good, rich, safety, silver town. <laughs> Shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Cranston is known to the underworld as the Shadow. Never seen, only heard, his true identity is known only to his constant friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, The Old People. <laughs> Argentine, flight D-8 calling. Argentine, flight D-8 calling. Go ahead, D-8. Position approximately 80 miles southeast, headwaters of the Amazon. Flying 9,000 feet, visibility good. Airspeed 210, next report at 430. Next report at 430, that is all. Calling Argentine, flight D-8. Calling Argentine, flight D-8. What's the matter, D-8? Can you hear us? Can you hear us, D-8? Your 4.30 report, half an hour overdue, D-8. Can you hear us, D-8? Calling Argentine flight, D-8. Second airliner disappeared in South America. Second airliner disappeared in South America. Get Now, gentlemen, if you please... In spite of the disappearance of two planes, D-7 and D-8, as superintendent of this airline, I insist that every effort must be made to establish air contact with South America at once. Consequently, I am sending one more plane to the Argentine in the hope that it will succeed where the D-7 and the D-8 failed. <laughs> Lamont, are you still craning over those maps? What are you doing, brushing up on your geography? In a sense, yes, Margot. And what country interests you now? Not a country, Margot, a continent, South America. Oh, the, those Argentine planes that disappeared, you're thinking of them? Exactly, there's something very unusual about their disappearance. What do you think happened to them? It isn't probable that three planes, manned by the finest pilots in the world and flying over a well-marked course, should disappear, unless they were made to disappear. Made to disappear? Exactly. I'm convinced something other than natural causes made them disappear. Oh, but what? That's what I'm trying to figure out. It's possible they received some message over their radios that took them off their course. 
caused their disappearance. But how will you find out for sure? By following the course of the three planes that disappeared. You mean go to South America? Exactly. I'm going to persuade the airlines to send through one more plane for the particular convenience of the shadow. So you're planning to go down the Amazon River? Yes, I'm going to pay a call on Superintendent McWade of the airlines and persuade him to send one more plane through to the Argentine. I, as the shadow, will be its sole passenger. Oh, no, you're wrong, Lamont. Wrong? Yes, you and I will be its sole passengers. Look here, Superintendent McWade. Let me fly a plane down to the Argentine and try to find those planes that disappear. I'm sorry, Jack. We cancel all South American flights. Yeah, but Terry Kane, the pilot on the D-9, he was my best friend. I've got to have a crack at finding him. No, Jack. We're not going to risk any more planes disappearing. Three are enough. Why don't you let him have a try at it, Superintendent? Well, well, well who are you? I am the Shadow. The Shadow? But well, where are you? As my name implies, Mr. McWade, I'm in the shadows. Right here in this room. Well, I, I don't understand. It's really quite simple. I've merely cast a cloud over your perceptions so that you're unable to see me. Say, I remember. You're that fellow that no one ever sees. I'm flattered that you know of me, pilot. Yes, but uh, uh, what do you want here? I've come to help you find those missing planes. How? Superintendent McWade, I want you to permit the plane that was to have taken off for the Argentine tonight to leave on schedule. Well, that's out of the question. We've officially discontinued our South American service. Then restore the service unofficially for tonight. Why not, Superintendent? Maybe this shadow knows something. I'll take a chance on flying them down. I appreciate your cooperation, pilot. Mr. McWade, I guarantee I'll clear up the mystery of the missing planes within 48 hours. If you will do as I say, have a plane ready to take off tonight at the scheduled hour. A woman will board it. A woman? Yes. Well, who is she? I cannot tell you that. But you must make no attempt to discover her identity. All right, but uh, how will we know her? She'll be wearing a long coat with a collar turned up around her face. She'll go right to the plane and board it. You're coming along, too. Most certainly, pilot. I shall be hiding in the rear of the plane. The baggage compartment, probably. I want your promise that you will make no attempt to try and find out who I am. All right. I promise. But what's the idea? Just that I am the shadow. And the shadow can only be heard. But never seen. <laughs> Margot, keep your collar up. The pilot can't see you. Turned up, Lamont. Just passed over the headwaters of the Amazon. Ella's going to happen. It should happen soon. Tell the pilot to watch his course carefully from now on. All right, Lamont. Tell him to hold on to the radio beam to be sure to report any variation in that beam to me at once. I'm expecting an invitation to our fate, and when it comes, we're going to accept it. <laughs> Look, Imperatore, he makes the young American old like us. Imperatore, he is a great man. Young, where could he cry like baby? Imperatore <laughs> hates all young people. No, no, no don't you, Fiend. Get away. Get away, uh, get away. No good screaming. Oh. Nobody can oh. hear you down here by the Amazon now. Oh. No American ever oh. come by the South American jungle unless I, oh. Anton Freeman, make him come here. Oh. Like I make you come here in your aeroplane. Call off these, whatever they are. Call them off. <laughs> I am oh. clever, huh? Oh. I build radio stations. Oh. I send you radio beam signals. Oh. I take you oh. off your course. Oh. I bring you here to my oh. laboratory cave so you are lost to the world. Oh, let me up. Let me up. I am Pix. Let me up. Hold him to the table. No. Hold him down. Let me go. Now, go. I do my experiment. Oh. What? What are you going to do? I make you very old. You, you what? Yeah, maybe I mean, 90 years, maybe 100 years old. Then you'd be older than Anton Freeman. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. All we found me to our young people. They laugh at me because I am old. So now I make you old. No. Older than me. Then I look at you and I say to myself, Anton, you are a very young man. Fierce man older than you. No, no. Come. It is time for the experiment. Get away from me. Get away. I make you very old. Twisted old man. Yeah. I make you very old man. What? What are you going to do to me? What? What is that serum you're giving me? 
It is the serum to make you very old. Oh, oh my body. Oh, what's happening to it? It is what? becoming twisted oh. and bent, oh. like an old tree oh. that lives too long. Oh. oh, my voice. What's happening to yes. my voice? It is old, oh. like rusty shutters oh. that go creak, creak oh. in the wind. Oh. <laughs> I, I can't breathe. I'm suffocating. No, oh. you are old <coughs> man. It is hard for old men to plead. Yeah, you are very old. Now I, Anton Freeman, am young man, and you are old, very old. Imperatorius! <laughs> hey, what is it, old pig? On the radio, we heard another airplane is coming. Ah, more people uh, come fly uh, over uh, me, huh? Yeah. Uh, that was good. <laughs> I need more young American for experiment. Come. I go send out the radio beam to bring the American here. I trick them, come here. They think they listen to radio beam from the Argentine. But they listen to the radio beam I, Anton Freeman, send out to bring them here. Come. We get more American down from sky for my experiment. Ladies and gentlemen, while you're waiting for the climax to the Shadow's exciting story, let me ask you one or two very important questions. Are your tires safe? Have you ever experienced that sickening feeling that comes when a car skids out of control? Do you realize the havoc that one blowout can play with life, limb, and pocketbook? The Shadow knows it may take just one skid, just one blowout to end your driving days for good. Yes. Riding on flimsy, unsafe tires is a mighty big gamble. You may win, but suppose you lose. Don't gamble. Have your car equipped with those amazing new Goodrich Silver Towns. Because this new kind of tire has what it takes to keep you and your family off the accident list. Inside, it has the famous Golden Ply blowout protection that has already saved thousands of motorists' lives. Outside... Every new Silvertown has the sensational lifesaver tread that gives you the greatest skid protection, the quickest, safest wet road stops you've ever had in all your driving days. Yes, the new Goodrich Safety Silvertown is really two great tires in one, but it costs you nothing extra, not a penny. Why guess about the condition of your tires? For safety's sake, ride on Goodrich Safety Silvertown. We're 110 miles southeast of the Amazon headwaters now, Shadow. Then our mysterious friend should be sending us a radio message soon. Say, something's happening with the radio beam. The radio beam? Yeah, it's become stronger all of a sudden. So, that's how our unknown friend sends us our invitation by radio beam. All right, pilot. We accept his invitation. Follow the beam signal he's sending. Yes, Shadow. Better start down now. Okay. Hope I can find a dime to land on. Look, down there. I thought so. The three planes that disappeared. Say, my hat's off to you, Shadow. You sure picked the spot. Plenty of room to land, isn't there, pilot? Well, not as much as I'd like. Here we go. Nice landing, pilot. Oh, thank you, lady. Holy smokes. Look out that window. Look at them. Dozens of tottering old men and women. Hey. Hey, that one there, I know that face. That's the face of Terry Kane, an old buddy of mine. Are you sure? Sure, I'd know his face anywhere, only... Only what's happened to him? He was six feet four, and now he's little. His features are all shrunken up. Why, Terry couldn't have been more than 30, but now look at him. Why, he's old as Methuselah. All these men and women... All of them must have been transformed into bent, broken old wretches by some monster. Say, I'm going to try to take off. No. Got to find out what's behind all this. Open the door. 
Let's go out and face them. Hey, it's all right for you to talk, Shadow. You hanging back in the shadows where no one can find you. My power to throw a cloud over the senses and remain unseen will save you from the same fate that befell these other people. Go ahead. Open the door. I'll be with you. Hey, quit pulling us, you mangy old geezers. Hey, pretty lady. Nice lady. Me take her. Hey, that's, that's Terry. <laughs> hey, Terry, don't you remember me? <laughs> Terry! <laughs> Young American. Imperator, I make you old. Older than me. <laughs> than me. Terry have pretty lady. Terry, eh? Terry you remember me. <laughs> Terry! Young American, you pig. Come, we show American how much we hate young men. <laughs> hey, Terry, Terry, call these guys off. Get off of me, you warts. Shadow, Shadow, call them off, will you? They're swarming all over me. Get them off, I tell you. Get away, all Get of you. Off. Get away. Get away. Your voice is frightening. They don't understand where it's coming from. Get away, all of you. Get away. Say, oh. it's a good thing you scared them off, Shadow. They were biting and pecking at me like a bunch of toothless mosquitoes. <laughs> Bodies and brains and souls have all been shrunk out of them. Yeah. Fine pigs! Who's that? That must be the gentleman known as Imperatore. I well, say, he's only a half pint himself. A dwarf? No, he's just an undersized man. Must be around 50. Fine pigs! I tell you, bring the American to me! Now I must get them myself. Ah, my American prince. You come see me, Anton Freeman. Now look here, you. Keep I... quiet. First, I talk with pretty lady here. Long time since I've seen such fine white skin. Very long time. Oh, don't touch me. Ah, you are like other American ladies, huh? You do not like me because I am not young, huh? Because maybe you like this big pilot, huh? Because he is young, huh? All right, I make him old. Older than me, with my serum. You see then what great man Anton Freeman is. Yeah, very great man. Maybe then you would like me more than him. Come, swine speaks! Bring the Americans to the laboratory! Throw the American on the table. Oh, no, you devils can't do this to me. Let me up. Look, look, Let look at this here. useless struggles. Let me up. The young American. Even a young American can do nothing against all the bent over old men. Huh? <laughs> Where's your great friend, the shadow, now, lady? I thought he was going to make everything all right. Like Gulliver in the land of the Lilliputians, eh, Dr. Freeman? Hey, who? Who, who says that? I know the shadow wouldn't fail us, pilot. Our friend the pilot is like Gulliver in the land of Lilliput, eh? Small old men swarming over him and fastening him down. Well, who are you? Why, I cannot see you. Because I am hiding in the shadows, Dr. Freeman. You see, I hate youth and its taunts. I am afraid of growing old, too, Dr. Freeman. Ah, you are old and bent, too, huh? Yes, so I learned to live in the shadows, away from human eyes, to conceal my age. Ah, but what I would give for a serum like yours, to avenge myself for the scorn of robust young people by making them older than I am. Ah, you know about my serum, yes, huh? Yes, and I know how you can shrink the bodies of these people you make old, as primitive people used to shrink the heads and bodies of corpses. You're a brilliant scientist, Dr. Freeman. Yeah, all by myself I found the serum. Here in the jungle, away from where there are young people. Ah, but they find me here too, those young ones. With the airplanes? Yeah, they come flying over me here. So you installed a radio transmitter and sent out radio signals, tricking the planes into flying here and getting lost. So they'd have to make forced landings. Ah, that is right. And when they landed, I captured the people inside of them and made them into old, bent creatures like you see here. Can they ever be restored to what they were? Never, never. Aren't you afraid they might turn on you, these hideous wretches? Oh, no, no. You see that switch on the wall? I only have to unlock it with this key and I wear my belt. I turn the switch on. I escape, and in a minute, I have to turn a dynamite destroys the old people. Brilliant, Doctor. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I show you now with the pilot how brilliant I am. Hey, get away from me. Dr. Freeman, so brilliant a scientist as yourself must have other medical wonders he's discovered. Ah, yeah. Still another serum I have. Another serum to do what, doctor? A serum to make little men big. To make little men big? Yeah. 
What effect would your serum have on these old people, Dr. Friedman? It would make them stupid monsters because they have no brains. Now, Ethan. Dr. Freeman, have you ever thought of using that serum on yourself? On myself? You could make yourself tall and big, taller than any young man. Taller than a young man? Dr. Freeman, think. Supposing you were to take the serum yourself, making yourself tall and strong. Yeah. And then, supposing you transformed all your old creatures into monsters. Why, with your brains and their strength, you could conquer the world. Yeah, you, you, you are right. Think. The tall and handsome Dr. Freeman. Yeah. Able to conquer the world. Yeah. Think of it. Come. Try it. Yeah, but, but can I give the serum to myself? A great I... surgeon like yourself can accomplish any miracle, Dr. Freeman, even to giving yourself an injection of the serum. Ah, you are right. It has right in this bottle Good. here. There's a mirror on the wall. Stand before it and give yourself the injection. Uh, yeah, but... Think. The... Master of the world, Dr. Freeman. Yeah. Certainly that's worth any effort. A little mm. pain. Oh, yeah, you are right. I will do it. How do you start? I show you. I I fill this glass too with a serum. Oh, no, no, I cannot do this. Come. There's no time to hesitate. The whole destiny of the world is in your hands. Master of the universe. Yeah. Yeah, I will do it. Now what? I I inject the serum. I I I am you see, I am growing, growing, you see. Mother McCree, the guy's growing like a balloon blowing up. You, Look at you, him. you see, man in the shadows, I am growing. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I see, Anton uh, Freeman. Your body is growing, uh, but your mind, is it growing too? Yeah, the inside, my head. It feel like it, it get big, big, like great big rubber ball inside vacuum. Yes, Dr. Freeman, a good description. A great rubber ball inside a vacuum. You forgot that your serum to enlarge the body would enlarge every organ of your body, even your brain. Yeah, I will even be greater genius. No. Your genius will shrink and disappear. You can enlarge the brain, Dr. Freeman, but you can't enlarge the matter that makes for intelligence. The larger your brain gets, the smaller your ratio of intelligence. You're becoming a stupid, heartless, brainless monster, like your wretched creations. No! No, I will show you I... Margo, Margo, quickly. You and the pilot get to the plane, get ready for the takeoff. But what about you, Lamont? I'll join you as soon as this monster's destroyed himself. Hurry. Well, Dr. Freeman, your serum works, doesn't it? You're tall now, seven feet, maybe more. But you're stupid. I will kill you, man in the shadow. I doubt that. You're too stupid to defend yourself now, even against your old people. Ha! Ah, you forget the dynamite. I will turn the switch, blow them on you to pieces. That is it. I will blow them up and you first... I unlock the switch. Get away from that switch, Freeman. Ha! The man in the shadows, he is afraid, huh? <laughs> Dr. Freeman, he's not afraid. Dynamite cannot hurt great big Dr. Freeman. See, already more than seven feet I am. Now I turn the switch. Take your hand off that switch. Make me take it off. You think you can make giant Dr. Friedman do anything? Very well, I will make you take your hand off it. Take off your hand from that switch. Ah, there you are. Now I feel you. Let go. Let go of me. <laughs> Dr. Friedman, find where you are. Let Shall go of my arm. You come to take my hand off the switch. That show me where you are. Now to pray, Dr. Freeman. He even can kill someone he cannot see. Let go of me. Now, I turn the switch that set off the dynamite. There, Shadow. In exactly two minutes, all people, they all explode. You'll die too if that dynamite goes off. No. The great Dr. Freeman, he lived even against dynamite. Ah, Shadow, lie to Dr. Freeman. You are big men, young too, huh? Oh, I feel how big you are, but not so big as me. I can crush you, 
like a paper box. Come on, come on. What's he doing to you? He's located me by touching me. Oh. Now he's, he's crushing me in his arms. I can't hold up to him as long as me. Pretty lady. Terry like pretty lady. Terry. Marco, get to the plane and leave at once. That dynamite will be going off soon. Terry, you like me? Uh, Terry like pretty lady very much. I like you too if you'll do something for me. Yeah, hey, I'd do anything for pretty lady. Then you, you and your friends, let the American alone. And attack the Imperatore. Oh, Imperatore, too great. No, no, he's just a big, stupid man now. Look at him. He's making himself large so he can destroy you. No, no, no. Don't try to save me, Margo. Don't. Save yourself before they die. Again, again. get rid of the Imperatore, Terry. Get uh, rid of Anton Freeman. Uh, and then you like Terry? Yes, yes, very much. All right, we do it. We will attack Dr. Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> and look, look, no more is Imperatore, old man. He's a big man now, so he can hurt us. Come, we show Imperatore. He can't hurt us. Come. <laughs> come, come, we show Imperatore how much we hate him. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Chris, you fight me. You stop fight me. Oh, oh, oh you fight me. Oh, Margo, oh. Margo, I'm here with you. Oh, thank goodness, Lamont. You made those wretches attack Freeman. He had to let me go. Hurry, let's go to the plane. The pilot's out there now. Another minute or two with his arms strangling me and I'd been finished. Oh. I, I'm afraid I rather overestimated my strength against the strength of a monster. His arms were like bands of steel. Uh, the pilot's ready to take off. Into the plane, quickly. Are you in, Shadow? Yes, yes, I'm with you. All right, pilot, take off. But what about the old people? More merciful that they perish, Marco. It's better that the poor wretches be removed as a scourge from the earth. Okay, here we go. None too soon, either. Just in time. Freeman and his fantastic empire are ended by his own devices destroyed by the creatures of his own fiendish creation. The creatures he had devised to satisfy his own egotistical hatred. Well, the South American Air Service is safe once again. You have been listening to a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow Magazine, now on sale at your local newsstand. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>